Try to see it my way Ethan Russell didn't shoot the birth of rock and roll, but he was certainly there for its early childhood. You got to be on the roof of the Beatles and on tour with the Stones and do the stuff with the Who and shoot rock. I mean, there, you're there. As the most enduring names in rock were emerging, Russell was a young UC Davis graduate living in London, hoping to become a writer. A friend of a friend came by and knew I'd taken some pictures. I had a couple pictures. I never took a photography course and said, uh, would I like to photograph his next interview? And I said, sure. Who is it? He said, Mick Jagger. And I thought, well, that was, you know, now I'm going to go home and tell my friends, right? And, um, and, in, and the same guy calls me back two months later and says, I, you want to photograph my next interview? And I said, who is it? And he said, John Lennon. And that's how I got started. He photographed Linda Ronstadt, John and Yoko, The Doors, and Jerry Lee Lewis. It's the late 70s. He's a legend, but he's not a big deal. He's not selling records, and they're trying to squeeze the record out of him, and, and the producer's scared of him, and he just comes in. And what I love about it is that's his choice of clothes. Right? I didn't tell him what to do. He didn't come dressed like that. He brought that to wear, and he brought the shoes to wear. And to me, he looks like a prosperous Memphis businessman, doesn't he? He was like, Mom, look what I did. I sold me a Chevy. Right? So, yeah, I, I love that picture for that reason. Russell compared his experiences on the first Stones tour in 1969 that ended with a tragic stabbing at a free concert in Altamont. The stage is four feet high. There were the accusations, there was the recriminations, there were the Hells Angels feeling like they had blame for stuff that wasn't their responsibility. Stones didn't feel like it was their responsibility. So this is backstage, but there is no backstage. <laughs> you know, you come outside of this little tent and there's 60 people standing, and then there's 70 people or thereabouts on the stage when we get there. It's sagging. It was really an out of control. Then the early 1970s Stones tour that had triple the staffing, security, the private planes, and the drugs. We're in a private plane, we land. And so I saw another sign and I went, Phew! and he came over and, and he gave me, and I took two shots. This one is great. The other one, he's kind of like, you know. So, and then this voice booms out and says, stop shooting, I'm going to confiscate the film. So I stopped shooting because I knew I had that. As Rock grew up, so did Russell. And he doubts the current music industry would allow for such candid, unscripted, undirected, purely historical documentation. In the music business is extremely tough because the music business has become so business, right? They really limit what you can get because A, they want to control it. It's a manager's business lawyer's game with copyright. And I think the part that's the biggest loss, and I, and I really mean this, is nobody's recording the history. Russell calls himself lucky, but anyone who's met him can tell there's something about him that put those bands at ease. I was not a guy that wanted to be cool like you. I was lucky to be there, that's the way I felt, and the way I shot was to be very much on the edges, not to, not to ask people to do anything, and sometimes it frustrated people. Pete Townsend used to say, tell us what to do. <laughs> Russell compares his photography to his days as a kid hunting, where patience, distance, and quickness allowed his prey or project to reveal themselves in front of his lens. That's what hunters do. They don't sort of go, hey, <laughs> you know, they're quiet and they pay attention and they're quick.